The Sound of Birds and the Art of Dan Boudin. Okay, something different today. We're going to look at a contemporary artist called Dan Boudin. He is a Romanian artist and works largely in graphite or pencil. And I've been interested in his work and wanting to teach you a lesson on this for some time. I like his mixture of the human form and animals. And I was thinking about the native birds we have around here and using his techniques and process to try and create our own version of a Dan Boudin picture. So let's have a look at some of his work and I'll read to you an excerpt from a book which mentions and describes his art practice. Boudin's work has a visionary quality. His love of nature is reminiscent of late medieval artists. However, though much of his subject matter reflects his faith and interest in mysticism and symbolism, he is very much engaged with the 21st century. Boudin is critical, often in a very subtle way, of man's attempts to position himself above nature and the natural order of things, but he is also admiring of our efforts to discover, engage and explore. Boudin's source materials are always distinctly personal, often symbolic and sometimes bizarre. What he achieves with his drawings, though, is nothing less than magical. The subjects themselves twinned with his extraordinary draftsmanship pull the viewer through a portal into a wonderfully heightened reality. That was written by Jean Neal in the book Vitamin D2. You're going to need the grid for this exercise, so I suggest you watch the video first on how to make a grid using a 4 centimeters or a milk bottle cap. And once you've done that, you can see I've squiggled out the line along the top of squares and down the left hand side and that's going to give us a focused four square grid away from the center of our page. Okay so looking at the bird's eye and focusing that on a place where the grid is going to now fit the rest of the bird's head is very important. So you've got enough squares to try and work that out. Each bird's head should be within a four by four grid. Now, when we're using grid, we're doing this because it is very useful to make precise drawings of things that are very clearly going to look weird if we don't draw them well. So a grid is going to help us use um, the photograph as a reference and it's going to help us replicate that easily. Now, the trick with a grid is you look at each line it's a bit like spot the difference. You look at each line from your source picture, you then look at the line on your piece of paper, and you look at where the shape that you're drawing is crossing the line on the square. So right now you can see I'm at the beard uh, point of this Cap Cayley's head, and I'm looking at if the line is over halfway in the middle of a square, or if the line is under halfway. So just now, right there, it's almost halfway, isn't it? That line's just coming in just under halfway. So I'm always thinking, is it halfway? Is it less or is it more? And then I'll redraw it like that. You should watch the how to measure angles video as that will be useful for this exercise. And to also consider the shapes. So you can see I've drawn that shape above the eyelid of the Cabocaly. I've drawn the shape of the beak, um, simplifying things. Also drawing in the light and dark areas will be helpful depending on what animal you're using. They might have more stripes. The main thing to take away is where your source picture has got a line crossing on the grid, you then transfer that onto your own grid on your piece of paper. Now, once you've drawn in the line drawing of your bird and all the shapes, the light and dark shapes, I want you to draw in a hand. I did this at a slightly later stage with the Capicale, um, so I thought I'd try it again with the Chaffinch just, just to demonstrate what I was trying to do. So like Dan Boudin's work, we're now fusing the human and the animal kingdom together using the same technique for making the hand, using the squint square, then uh, simple lines to add structure to be the structure of our digits, 
and um, then also sketching in the thumb lines we will carefully um, sketch in the outline of a hand now it doesn't need to be as detailed as our previous picture of a hand but it at least needs to look realistic um, so we're going to make sure that things look like they're in proportion once we've finished one hand I want you to try and mirror that technique on the other side so it looks like we've got another hand behind so when you finish this that is this exercise complete and next lesson we'll start to look at how to add tone and how to deal with texture in the form of feathers I hope this hasn't been too difficult for you and um, you've learnt how to use a grid in this way and see you next lesson.